Hello, everyone. This is uh, Abhijit Rane and Mike Hendrick here on behalf of Sequitur Labs. Um, we are. Uh, I'm going to do the first couple of slides um, in this deck and then hand it over to Mike. The topic um, of the uh, of today's webinar is basically how to get started with uh, writing TAs, um, and so it covers. Uh, a couple of things. It sort of goes a bit into detail about the T client API, and then a walkthrough, uh, a sample application um, th that uh, basically walks through the process of of, of writing a simple TA. Um, so with that, um, the first thing I want to address as uh, and I think it's very appropriate to do this at this time as the teams are being formed and um, and and you start thinking about what are we going to, you know, what kind of application are we going to build, is to sort of get a, get a perspective on what is the business value of the T, especially where IoT products are concerned. Um, it is a little different than uh, where, what the T has traditionally been used on the... Um, say, in mobile devices or in other devices. Um, it's still, you know, you still leverage the hardware security capabilities of the T, but the business value is a, is a little different. So let's jump into that. Um, so we've been uh, marketing a T at Sequitur Labs for um, the last year or so, and we've learned a lot about what is it that customers are looking for. Uh, and the customers we've typically targeted are in the industrial IoT space um, or and, and and some in the consumer IoT space, uh, but mostly in the industrial uh, on the industrial side. And what we've learned is is how to really communicate the value of the T. Um, and we find when, when when companies are looking at implementing uh, T, particularly for these industrial IoT devices, there's several things that uh, link the value of the T uh, and the capabilities of the T to the business value. So number one um, is the issue of revenue loss and, and, and leakage. And when I say number one, it's simply because it's the top one here. Uh, this is not arranged in any, any priority. Different companies may have different problems uh, as their priority one uh, issue uh, and, and, and where they see the T solving their problem. Uh, but revenue loss leakage as a result of IP theft um, is a huge issue, uh, particularly uh, when some of these devices have to be built in, let's, let's say, let's call it untrusted manufacturing facilities. So um, it, for a lot of companies, that is a major issue. The other issue is, um, you, know, as, you know, as of this morning, there was uh, Johnson & Johnson talked about uh, a, um, um, a medical device that they said could be hacked. Now, this was a, uh, they were talking about a device that is about 15 years old, but this is the problem, that there are a lot of devices, legacy devices in a particular product category that have no protections uh, whatsoever. They don't implement any sort of anti-tamper uh, uh, platforms uh, or platforms with anti-tamper uh, protection. Um, nor do they have any sort of separation and isolation for any, uh, you know, where firmware is concerned. So uh, particularly, I think, in the case of medical devices, um, because uh, these devices need to be government certified. And so once they're certified, you can't really touch it, uh, uh, you know, unless you go back to the certification process, which nobody wants to do. So there are these long product cycles um, where the ability to protect it for the long term is really, really key. Uh, secondly, in terms of operation, optimizing operations, maintenance, um, or the lifespan of the product, things like uh, secure boot, things like secure firmware update, graceful remediations, and secure remediation um, are, are important um, uh, aspects. And in all these, this is, of course, sort of the 100,000 foot, foot view of what are uh, what are the business problems? Um, but clearly, uh, we've come across uh, customers who um, who see the value of the team addressing them. Um, so there's a there's a growing realization, and I think the T again plays very well into this. 
of what is required. Uh, you know, think of it as a new checklist, if you will. Although uh, we don't like, we, we like to say that security is a and the trust zone impact. Uh, in, in fact, is a strategy. It's not a checkbox. With things like isolation, separate separation, as as concepts have been around for a very long time. So this is not anything new. Um, but I think the, the 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 reasons and the impetus behind implementing uh, these aspects has certainly accelerated. So there is a there is a demand for. A, uh, Capabilities like secure boot, a demand for to be able to do, to do secure firmware updates, um, to manage keys in in a uh, in an isolated and protected manner. So, all of this essentially goes towards achieving uh, confidential confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity, uh, which again is not a new concept. It is just made very real um, and simple and, and definitely easier to implement um, because of technologies like the trust zone and the T. So uh, in terms of uh, markets and applications, again, when you're thinking about what project you want to do, whether it's just for the hackathon or even going forward, security is an aspect of products that is going across a variety of IoT markets, uh, certainly point of sale. And, and, and you can correlate some of these things to recent uh, hacks. So connected vehicles, medical devices, payments, point of sale, and so forth. Uh, so there is a, a, I believe, a huge opportunity for anyone, either you're a product designer or you're or a security professional, to a, to really have a good understanding of the of the trust zone, um, and 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 T. Uh, again, and we mentioned this earlier. In case you were you were not able to attend, the reason we chose the Pi for this is because it is one of the cheapest devices that you can go and use uh, to, to learn about how uh, how to create a TA. And once again, I will say that the implementation of Trust Zone on the Pi is not complete in that all the security functions are not propagated through the bus fabric. And, and so please don't use it for um, if you're designing um, a, a nuclear cooling rod control. Um, yeah, use something that is um, that is more commercial and 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 appropriate, uh, but it's a great tool for learning and experimenting. So with that, I'm going to transfer control over to uh, Mike Hendrick. Mike Hendrick is our VP of Engineering, um, and he will talk through getting started with Opti and writing um, writing your first TA. So Mike, up to you. All right, thanks, Abhijit, and good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Um, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the basics of uh, writing your, your first trusted application. So Opti uh, is implemented on the global platforms APIs. So it's kind of global platform compliant APIs. And so um, you can go to global platforms uh, uh, website and uh, download the APIs to see exactly how um, you know, the APIs you have access to. Um, there's two uh, core documents, or well, two sort of core areas you wanna look at. One is the T internal core API. This is the API that the TA is written with. So these are all the APIs that a TA will be able to um, call and use and, and, and defines that side. Um, the D T client API is for the normal world side, the, the Linux side. These are the APIs that you'll call from your from your application on the, the normal world uh, to initiate uh, uh, calls into, the, into your TA um, to do whatever secure functions they need to do. So um, I don't know, I don't think we talked. So fundamentally, um, all the applications have two components. They have a, a normal world Linux side so you're writing your normal application, and then you have these special secure functions that you want to execute within the T, um, and those um, are written as the, the trust applications. You can have one trust application, you can have multiple trust applications. Um, it, it really depends on what your secure functions are that you're trying to write. So the trusted applications are written using the T internal core API, and the 
uh, and the normal world applications are written. Uh, anytime you need to call over to the to the D client API, uh, you, or the D client or the TA, you use the T client API. So those are the two the two specs that you're looking at from global platform. Um, so um, yeah, this is sort of to reemphasize. So the T client API um, is a mechanism to interact it with the trust application. Um, it's based on global platforms. Opti has been, uh, you know, so it's standardized. So, so different T implementations, you can, you can um, if they're global platform compliant, you have a common API there. Um, the, um, their app, the API is, is application independent. And, and what we mean by that is you define so it passes parameters from normal world to secure world in the same way every time. Uh, you have a very standardized interface there, and then the trust application that you're writing will determine what to do with the with the with the uh, data that is passed. Um, and so, regardless of how the T is implemented, um, you know it's it's it's, a, it's the same API. Um, it's uh, it's based on a shared memory, so you. Um, so you can do zero copy operations. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly straightforward, simple to use model. Um, so there are there is some error handling. Um, obviously, when you're dealing with secure functions, uh, you know error handling. Uh, you're going to have to be careful with, with that to, to make sure that your security is maintains its, its strength and not pass too much uh, information within your error messages. Um, but here are, uh, you know, T results. Um, and, 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 and you'll see, you know, the result that's being passed back here. Um, and then, and then just some of the, the uh, re re routine communications you can, you can see here as well. Okay. Um, so the T client API, um, so the sort of the, the key concepts. So, so when you're talking to a trusted application, a couple things have to occur. The first thing is you set up a context. The context opens the connection between the normal world or the rich execution environment and the trusted execution environment. So normal world, secure world. So context just opens the connection between the two. The session is the next step. It opens the uh, connection between your application and the TA. And so now you've gone from opening uh, uh, the connection, the context, which is just to the, the T in general. Now you've specified a specific trusted application. And then uh, finally, the command is what you're, you know, what you're passing across. There's a, there's a, a handful of commands uh, that you can, you can execute and, and, and that's passing that piece. And then, um, and then you're using shared buffers, shared memory, um, to pass the information back and forth between the two, um, between between the the, the uh, normal world and the secure world. So everything is passed via shared memory. Um, so stepping forward. <clears throat> so, like I said, the context really opens up the. Um, um, the communication between the normal world and the T. Uh, you have an initialized context, a finalized context. You should, there's only one T present, so always use null as the T name. Um, we'll tip there. Fairly straightforward. So the very first thing that you do is typically initialize the context, and the very last thing you do will finalize the context. Um, so uh, you can connect to more one or more trusted applications within a, within um, the T within the context. So the session object uh, identifies uh, the TA by the UID. Um, it specifies a login method, which, for all practical purposes, you should just use a public login because, um, in general, you should not build any security functions within the T that rely on information being generated in provided by the normal world. So, so in general, the, another way to say that is the trusted application will always be suspicious 
of 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 the TA of the of the normal world that's calling it, and so it should be designed in a way that it doesn't actually give up secrets. Um, and this is this is a principle that's you know a big principle, and it's sometimes hard to to get around. Um, and and so you you know if you're if you're signing a, a payload. You know, you can sign it. You don't know. You know, you don't necessarily trust it's for, but never, you know, pass your private keys back. Never uh, pass if somebody wants to validate a pin on a, on a UI at some point. Never uh, uh, pass the pin back. You're always just providing the resulted action, um, which is why why we just use the public login. Um, uh, and then you can spy operations. You can cancel in the middle of a TA. So um, that's that piece. Um, commands are identified by a 32 bit integer. I mean, this is all stuff that as you start to look at the API and play with the examples will become very fairly obvious. Um, um, so, you know, blocking parameters, you basically have four types of parameters. You have in, out, and in, out, in, 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 out, and out parameters. Um, and then you can invoke commands. So you can have up to four parameters that you're passing of those types. <clears throat> so uh, the trusted application um, JTAG is only if you can only look at a trusted application uh, from the debug side if the uh, secure JTAG is enabled. In this case, you'll have access to it. Otherwise, you have to use uh, messages printouts to, uh, to 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 see what's going on. Um, on the T on the uh, on the on the normal Linux side, you have full you know Linux uh, debug capabilities and native code there. So a little bit here, this is just about the UUID. So, so when you create your TA, this will be done with the scripts. Um, the TA gets assigned a UUID. This is how you identify it. As you see previously, that's how you, you refer to it. So um, just this is a slide of just describing the UUID a little bit. Um, we, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, operations and parameters. So so the, basically these are the parameters. So you, you set them up when you're going to call a TA and and uh, pass the parameters uh, in, in the actual call here. Um, you know it's just a C structure for all the parameters. Well, you'll see that in the example. Um, yep. As as we're um, as we're uh, going through it here, so. I'm moving through this fast. I assume that you know most of the folks you know are familiar with these these some of these concepts, and that uh, you know as you as you start to look at the examples and as you start to, look, to play with it, you can reference back to this and and you can you can do things there. So just one. So conceptually, here's a way to think about the memory that you're handling because the processor is changing mode. You're going from normal from the normal world to the secure world. And the when you're sharing memory in the normal world, you know your your client app is 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 owns the buffer, so to speak, and is writing to it. You transfer control, or you call the TA. At which point the owner, the processor supports um, the processor will switch to secure mode. You're now in the T in the trusted application. It effectively has access to that shared memory. The shared memory is still non-secure, so it's still the same memory you had before. Um, this, is, this is a conceptual model of a way to think about it. There's a lot of subtleties in here where, where um, um, to be that the, the we can, you know, there's a lot of nuance that we could we could really get into it uh, if we if we have lots of questions about security. Um, but but conceptually, you know, this is the way to think about it. So your, your client application loads the buffer. Trusted application is now uh, dealing with the buffer, and then it's going to pass it back um, um, to control of the client application. As you can see, there's no there's no copying um, of, of information um, back and forth. So so it helps you know through with the overall performance. Um, you're operating directly on that memory. Um, you are responsible for freed up memory um, that gets allocated. Um, just looking through if there's other other things on here. I think that's that's pretty much everything. 
So um, you can uh, specify uh, uh, temporary or registered buffers. Um, you know, temporaries will will end on uh, uh, only for the length of the call, uh, and then and then registered to take longer. So so in general, use temporary. Um, if you don't need to, to save, like I said, you, you have to deallocate memory there. Um, sort of design considerations that you're looking at here. <clears throat> so um, just a little bit about threading. So most operations are thread safe. Um, the, you know, uh, exceptions for creation and deletion of objects, uh, just, you, you know, uh, writing to the same buffers for multiple DAs can, can get confusing. Uh, you can access multiple TAs in the same T simultaneously. Um, that that is possible. Uh, so so just a couple of words there. I'm trying to keep us moving. So you can cancel. It is possible to cancel uh, trust uh, TA once you've called it. Um, and 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 uh, so so once once initiated, you can you can cancel it. So. Um, a couple of comments about about that here, um, and then you'll you'll complete with a, a tier or cancel error code. So, uh, so here, okay, so here we're starting. So a little bit of an example. So just a, this is a very simple example. A um, couple of quick words. So this example just increments a counter in the TA. That's all it's doing. Um, the error handling has mostly been omitted here. You'll see you'll see reference to it, but it's, it's been omitted here. And then the comments have also been dropped out of here just to get it onto a PowerPoint in a reasonable, in a reasonable fashion. So, um, so what you see here is, is basically just, you know, a context to session, the operation, the error, and the result all defined up front. And then, like I said, you see the initialized context. Um, one more uh, on this on this example. So, this was this is sort of an example that was made up for for the uh, presentation. It's similar to the example that you'll see in the actual uh, in the actual code in, in the actual uh, image that you have. Um, it's, it's similar, but it's, it is a little different. So you won't see exactly this the same exact example. You, once you get the kits, you'll have an example in there. You'll have a hello world example that um, does increment a counter, it does work, it has the scripts to compile, um, and then you can compile, modify, see it running, and, and you'll have that in the kit. I think we're working on seeing if we can distribute the kit, the software side of the kit prior to uh, uh, the Friday. Um, we'll, we'll keep posted on that. And then you would be able to download the VM and see the code and do and play with it ahead of time. Okay, so um, so anyway, so what you see, yeah, so the initial, the context gets opened, the session gets opened, identifying the context, the session ID, the UUID of the trusted application that you're using, like I said, for logins, you know, no point in doing anything other than public, and then um, and then the origins, uh, the error origin. Okay, and then you get to see. So now you see the definition of the uh, all the parameters here. Um, you have one value that's in out. Um, and the value is, is set to 42 that you're passing in. And then you invoke the, uh, the, uh, the command, the invoke command is, it calls the session and, uh, the TA and, 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 uh, and the operation and then has the error there as well. Um, the TA just increments that, that, that value from 42 to 43. Um, and you would see, you see that printed on the, on the, on the screen. Um, Pretty straightforward, and then you, you have a, a print the new value there um, after after the TA is called, and then you close things up. I think that's it. Yep. So, so I think you know we went through that pretty fast. A lot of this is stuff you can review, and as you're getting into it, I, we're going to do a session um, um, Friday evening as well. Um, a lot of this will be also recovered, and then and then as you get into it, I think it'll 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 make more sense, and then you'll have it right in front of you. <laughs>